Nikki, welcome to Finland. Oh, it's good you. to have you here. Thank you. Um, you just arrived to Finland and uh, you've been here like for two hours. That's correct. The weather is nice, but the, the flights were kind of hard, right? Well, I believe that the weather is better than Colorado. It was very hot. Yeah. Uh, New York went over the 100 degrees, so it was, the heat was very strong in New York. So yeah. it's good to be in Finland, yeah, especially well, in Helsinki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is happening in your ministry right now? Well, I have been traveling extensively. I just got in from, I don't want, I don't want to waste my time in talking on all the crusades, but uh, one of the greatest crusades was in Australia and New mm. Zealand, especially in New Zealand when I had to deal with uh, the gang leaders and then meet for the first time in history mm. in, a, in, in a common place where I can talk to them and, and bring it, it, what you call a truly a truth and it was in a secret place. The, the media could not be there. And then try to find out what happened. And it, it, it lasts about three hours. And then I, I then it was packed. The stadium was packed. And I, I spoke to the parliament in Australia. Mm. So in New Zealand, it was a, it was a national type of thing. Yeah. So you so you spoke to the parliament. What happened there? Well, I, 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 I told him about the situation. I believe that, especially in New Zealand, I told him there's a new drug coming in. But the worst problem is that the young people want to immune or they want to imitate the, the United States uh, rappers and, and hip hoppers. And, and the, mu the lyrics and the music is not the best right now in the United States. Mm. Uh, Nikki Cruz, when we do evangelism and we reach out for the people, how can we win, how can I win the negative emotions that I might have concerning that issue? In, in the area so? Yeah, when I'm reaching out to the people, but my, my emotions are fighting against that. Well, I think it all depends about the culture. I think mm. uh, if you're dealing with the United States, we're more of an uh, expressive uh, more emotional in our presentations, mm. and uh, uh, perhaps you more conservative and, mm. and many times more shy. Mm. Uh, we believe in the aggressiveness of mm. the gospel of Christ because the situation that we are living is is very precarious. Mm. It's very uh, complicated, and and that has been mm. the situation. Uh, that Christianity have come into a place mm. that other religions are coming more stronger mm. and we have become more passive. Mm. So we have to change the, the situation. Perhaps if you don't be careful, I, I believe the Scandinavian country in 20 years, they become Muslim. Yeah, yeah. That the way that, that the way Europe is looking into more yeah. of uh, uh, a, 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 different, a different culture, society. Yeah. Well, that comes to us. Uh, next question is that when I'm doing evangelism, how can I overcome the fear that I have towards people? What comes maybe to, maybe to other cultures or other other nations or just my neighbor? How, how can I overcome the I, fear? I don't think I don't think there's nothing different. I, I do be, I do believe that the same passion that was. Mm. In the beginning of the church, in mm. the book of Acts, I do believe that what mm. that, that we mm. we I believe that right now we don't have no other no other alternative but to really believe what the Bible say and walk to the pages of the book of Act mm. uh, and see the the wonder and the miracle that we are missing in our life. And the, and, and the reason why is because we are shy, we, 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 we don't push it to the next level, mm. and we are not getting out of the boat and touch the water. Mm. I think that's, that's the problem that I see. Mm. How can I reach out to the people? What are the ways to reach out and win people, a lot of people to Christ? It's, it, it almost, almost I can feel that you got it. The thing is that you have to express it mm. and, and don't lose the opportunity. Uh, for me, it's more easy because perhaps I, I have written 
15 books and people are aware of my mm. life. So mm. I can see your point, mm. but I believe that that young people is the answer today to really for the new revolution where there's no restriction, yeah. but forgiveness, uh, mercy, mm. the grace of God and the love of God in us. Mm. Yeah, that's exciting to hear and uh, we are really waiting for the revival here in Finland. But there are many people who are just waiting for the revival. What else should they do than just wait? I, I do believe, honestly, that the young people, they are they are searching mm. and the vulnerability is the problem here. Mm. Uh, when you are vulnerable, there's a lot of things that you can get into from mm. drug, from sex, from everything, whatever, whatever, whatever going in, in our society. Mm. And, 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 I, and I do believe that can be dangerous. In the United States, the problem that we have is that not only the the young people have been total going so, so bad in, in many areas, mm. but there's a lot of young people that they are really a witness for Jesus Christ too. But the problem that we have in, in, in the state is the children. Mm. I never have seen many children get killed mm. in our country like it's happening, mm. that they are disapp disappearing, just like it happened in, in Portugal mm. with that little girl from, from Mm. Uh, United Kingdom. That's very sad. Mm. Uh, you come from a background that you lived in Puerto Rico and then you moved to New York. I like that way that you say Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, um, you lived in a w very dark world in your young, young years. Uh, what was the key issues that turned your life? Why did you give your life to Christ? Well, uh, it's, it's true what you're saying. It, it was one of the darkest moments of my life when I was a, a little boy, when I lost my innocence. Uh, mm. uh, I do believe that when I was a little boy, I did love my my parents, my mm. my mother, my brother, mm. my my father. Mm. But when everything turned around, my father mm. was a satanic priest and my mother was a mm. witch. So there, there, everything went, went against me. I, I was born to be a loser. Mm. And my mother told me right on my face, mm. you are nothing, you are no good for nothing. I, uh, I regret and I curse the day that I brought you into this world. Mm. You are not my son. Mm. Get out of my life. Mm. Uh, she beat me up so many times physically that, that I, honestly, I never felt the, that physical pain anymore. Mm but I could never shake or break the emotional pain. Mm. And I, uh, rejection was one of the biggest, the biggest problem that I have. I, I, I could not live with that kind of rejection that my mother brought me into this world to, mm. to curse me. Mm. Many people feel rejected because of the culture. We sometimes are quite shy but also the problems in the families. They feel rejected and in their relationship with the people. Uh, how can a person be healed from rejection? I had to take you to, to quite a few things here mm. to, to make myself more clear. The pain that I went through, mm. pain is real. Yeah. You can never deny that. Yeah. It was painful. Mm. But I do believe that not only rejection, but depression, and but one of the biggest weapons that killed me, almost killed me, mm. and is killing the youth, yeah. is loneliness. Yeah. Lo loneliness to me was like a seductive lady that used to walk in three o'clock in the morning yeah. when I was high, when I was stone high, or when I left the gangs and here I by myself. Mm. And Loneliness used to press so heavy on me that many times I, I felt that kind of very, very rare feelings of committing suicide. Mm. And quite a few times I was that close to kill my, myself because the mess I was in and all the wrong things that I did in my life. Mm. And then, then you met with Pastor David Wilkerson 
and that well I you know he was a pastor I, I, it's, it's, <laughs> I'll be honest to you yeah um, when the street you you didn't know you it's a pastor today yeah. but in that time it was evangelist so yeah so I didn't know who Wilkerson what the heck Wilkerson was so he came to you and what did he say to you? What, what, what was that that just totally stopped your life, that you, you, you were running hard and then he came? This message well, came well, to you. Well, there's quite a few events that took place. Yeah. I lost my best friend. He died in my arm. Yeah. I was 18. He was 17. Uh, it seemed like everything had gone wrong. You mm. know, there was nothing good had mm. been going since I'd been a child. Mm. So, so then my gang, the mama retaliate and the mama was killed two guys mm. uh, because we was like family. Mm. That that was the lowest point, okay. Uh, and then when I got busted, which is mean I got I, I got I was put in jail and by the police, knowing that kind of crime, but in, in a crime that I did, mm. and that was when I came out. And the criminal court of Brooklyn assigned uh, Dr. Goodman, a psychologist, to deal with my case. And I was in jail, so he went to the court and told the court if, if they can give me, it can help me, but I had to get out mm. six month probation. In that, in that link of time, mm. I went to all the texts, he psychoanalyzed me and all of that. To f and to find out that he told me, Nikki, you're walking straight to jail, the electric chair, and hell. Mm. The confrontation with Wilkerson, uh, it was something that mm. New York City is, uh, is, is one of the largest cities in our country. So mm. everything go, everything happened in New York. Yeah. So what happened was that I was with my girlfriend about three blocks down. And then I, I, I see these commotions, these people running everywhere, going here and there. So I never care, you know. You, 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 you live in a city that, mm. uh, that, that you go to bed uh, with so much noise, the train, the buses, the people screaming, uh, the smell of the ghetto, mm. and, and the salsa music, and all of these things. And here, out of the blue sky, this guy come in, yeah. and I was with my girl, yeah. and I said, come on, let's go and see what's happening. So she, uh, she, she some way, she said, oh, come on, Nikki, try to discourage me. And I said, look, uh, what happened is somebody got killed. That's the only time people get happy here in New York, because it's true, there's so much crime. And I said, no, I want to go and see mm. what's happening. And that was the first time I met Dave Wilkerson. Mm. He was, he was speaking loud. He, the, the first thing that I heard, it was just very simple. God had the power to change your life right now. Mm. And when he said that, I started cursing him. I told him if he opened his mouth, I would kill him. Mm. Remember, I have 205 guys and 75 girls. So yeah. It was one of the most fearful gangs in New York. Yeah. And he did. He, he didn't say nothing. And then I started I start pushing the people. There was about 300 people there. Yeah. And that's when there is day workers. On. And I couldn't believe it that God sent somebody like that. He was so skinny. Yeah. Skinny, skinny like a spaghetti. Yeah. He got those thick glasses. I mean, the, the guy looked weird, like he came from the, twi the twilight zone. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, he, 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 he really stood there, and that answered your question. In that moment, it seemed that the, the demon dimension is taking control of everything. Wrong. Yeah. The church is not a building. The church is not for war. Mm. The church is you, it's yeah. me. It's a walking church. The, because mm. the power of the Holy Spirit is in you, and he gave you that kind of power to be a witness. And when Wilkerson was against the wall, and I beat him, and I cursed him, and I did all these things, something happened that I wasn't expected. Mm. Wilkerson changed in my very eyes and the 
boldness of the Holy Spirit. That is the key. Mm. The boldness of the Holy Spirit came upon him. He changed personality, you know, like a schizophrenic. Yeah. Ch changed personality, but not like a schizophrenic. But this is this man became very, very strong. He aimed right straight into my problem. Mm. He 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 told me, Nikki, Jesus love you. Nikki, you can kill me and cut me in thousand pieces, and you can throw them, cast them right there on, on, on the street, but every little piece gonna cry out that Jesus loves you. That is the bonus of the Holy Spirit. And he told me, Nikki, you can never kill love because God is love, and he's gonna hunt you every place that you go. So some way, somehow, mm. the Holy Spirit, play a big part mm. in every person that is available and vulnerable for the Holy Spirit to do anything. And that's what Wilkerson did. Mm. He was completely into the mercy of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Wow. So now that you are still good friends with Pastor Dave Wilkerson, do you do any ministry together with him? You know, we have not done that many things together. Yeah. I think that maybe because I, I was scared or I, I travel extensively more than Dave. Yeah. And um, my ministry is more for mm. salvation. I, I, the, the attraction is for those who don't know Christ. I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Right now, uh, there's going to be a, 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 a movie coming out of my life in, from Hollywood. It's mm. a secular, wow. but with the message of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, I just, right now was in Hollywood dealing with the script writer and all of this. And that's gonna be another way to, to, mm. to bring the gospel because the conversion is gonna be that Christ, Jesus Christ was the one who changed me. So there are a lot of things that is knowing the cross on the streets play, mm. but that this is it's, it's more or less more than run, baby, run. There's a lot of stuff. So th th there's a lot of things how to really mm. evangelize. This is not going to be just uh, a cheesy movie. It's going to mm. be very, very strong movie and well done mm. by one of the biggest companies in, in, in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, as a Christian, uh, there can be moments where there's an opportunity to uh, tell the gospel to, your, to my friend or something. And sometimes I feel that as Christians, we might be afraid to really strongly tell about the good news or heal for the sick or cast out the demons. We are kind of like thinking just in our, in our minds that we just need to be a little bit calm and, you know, respectful and that kind of thing. Is that the wise way to go? Should we do that always, just to be wise and look good and handsome and everything? Well, I, 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 got, I got a feeling here that you're speaking for many Christians and many youth as you speak for yourself. I believe that your questions are, are very novel. I, I do believe that the, the hunger and the question that you have, mm -hmm. you are not the only one who have that. Uh, in the beginning when I got converted, it was very hard, very hard for me to express myself. Mm -hmm. But then this bonus come in that you are not afraid of nothing. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't know the Bible in that time either. Uh, but I do believe that you have to come out. Mm. You, got to, you cannot allow people to influence you. Mm. You are here to influence people. Yeah. You are not here that people change our, our value. Mm. We are here to change the people's life so the values can change. Mm. And, and the thing is, that we got to go to the simplicity of the gospel. Mm. I am not ashamed of the gospel of, of Christ. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and through all of that, uh, you never know, you never know how the Holy Spirit can take you when you feel that you're shy, mm. when, you, when you go to somebody who are hurting so much mm. and you, come just like a lot of people want to see prophets and all of this, mm. you can be the answer for that person. Because if you come out and you begin to share Jesus mm. more, mm. you become more free. 
mm. and you can go to the next level, seriously. Yeah, Nikki Cruz, what if I would tell you that, uh, of course I will do an evangelistic event, but I just don't have the money for it. You don't have to, you don't have to go ahead and go to auditorium. You started like I started, you started like Wilkerson, you started mm -hmm. in the street. And people, when they began to see results, they began to back you up. Yeah. Because then from there you, t you take a step by step. Yeah. You, you follow me? Yeah. Uh, if, if I tell you, you don't have the money, the first thing I say, you go and rob a bank. But that's, it's against your convictions. Yeah. But you started the way God, the Holy Spirit always will open door. It is the anointing of the Holy Ghost in you. Yeah. It is for you to believe mm. it can happen. Mm. It is for you to really believe you are not different than the apostles. Mm. You can walk to the pages of the book of Acts and signs and wonder will happen. It's happening in my life. Mm. It's happening in many. You don't have to be a gang leader. You don't have to be a country preacher. Mm. The only thing is for you to be available mm. and say, God, here I am. Mm. Do whatever you want to do with my life. Take the shyness away. Mm. Give me the power yeah. of words. Mm. Give me the discerning. Direct me that every morning when I get up, that I have this passion mm. to reach somebody for Christ. But first, I want to have a love affair with you. Mm. When I have that love affair, love take over, mm. and that love need to be shared. Mm. I think that's the way it is. When I got converted, it, 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 it happened. It just, I began to feel for the people. Mm. And then I went to college, and then uh, I went by myself in the street in East Los Angeles to the gangs. Yeah. And I began to testify how Jesus changed me, just mm. like the Apostle Paul. Yeah. And people were listening. Yeah. And people literally were taking the drugs and, and throw them right down the street, step on. I saw that. Mm. And drug addicts and gang members crying like babies mm. right down in the streets. Yeah. Well, uh, you've been stepping out. In do, the... I sound, do I look spooky? No. No. You look good. I believe that God is in us. And I do believe mm. that you have access to God's holy presence in your life. Mm. And because your sincerity, mm. I'm telling you, you will do the will of God, and He will bless you. He will anoint you. Mm. Thank you. I don't care if you're white, or you're black, or brown, mm. uh, like myself. Yeah. Because you guys need to need a sun tan. Yeah. I, I, I was born with a sun tan. You know yeah. that. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. It's awesome. I don't have to go to the sun to get burned. Yeah. So, so just, just allow yourself to be used. You've been stepping out in faith many times, and you, you've been doing big events all around the world. There must have been many situations where God has helped you in the financial issues also. He's been providing, helping you. Do you have any story or something that you be, that where God has really stepped in and just truly helped you to take the gospel out? Well, there's some places like in, in Latin country that the people don't have the money, mm. and sometimes we put the money and we don't go over there where God, you have to supply all the need. You're not going to take money from the, the poor people. But so many times somebody come and, and help you. Some, sometimes the businessmen in the community then say, then call me and they say, look, we have a need and we want you to come. They, they really care. And this is businessmen that they have been blessed mm. financially. Mm. And, and, and when, when these people began to see the need, they always do that. I have been in a place that, that if I, if I be honest to you, if I had to collect right now money, they have a million dollars that people all that they never pay for the crusades. Mm. And we had to take over. And then we took the hit, mm. which is mean we, uh, we, 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 we had to take care of the budget in the office. Mm. But if you began to think that way, you never do it because mm. that can happen. Remember, mm. for one death, mm. there's thousands of resurrection. Yeah. And for one need, 
the last way of gas supply. Yeah. So I cannot smoke my mind. When I say smoke my mind, it's a terminology of I don't allow my mind to yeah. be overpowered by and worried and body, uh, worry about all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are so happy that you are now in Finland and there's a lot of people who respect you and they love you. And even in the schools, the people have been reading your books in the, mm -hmm. in the public schools. How do you feel about coming here? You know, we're so happy that you came. First, I, I want to say that I do love Finland. Mm. I always have loved Finland. I have been here many times. And one time I talked in, uh, in the college room when I all the high school students came in, yeah. uh, and I think you was a little boy. Yeah. To try to sneak in, but you was too little. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, no, it's uh, the, the my biggest education is culture. Mm. You got to respect people mm. and their culture. Yeah. And I really, honestly, and I don't want to be a phony evangelist. Mm. I do, I do love the people in Finland. I always have spoke very highly. Mm. Uh, they have treated me very well. They have opened their arms with love. And uh, and I have seen the result. Although I remember that not too long ago, I don't, I, I, I don't remember how many years, you lost one of the great evangelists that used to go, mm. and people used to get healed. Yeah. And yet he died yeah. with illness, yeah. and I got very upset. Yeah, he, his name was Neil Ulivainio. Yes, I got very upset because I said, "Wow, I was like a cheerleader, you know. Yeah. I was pulling for you, God. Wow, thank yeah. you, God, that you are moving in in, in Finland. But you can be that person. Yeah. Don't you ever undermine yourself. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit is different." Yeah, it's exciting what God can do through a person, one yes. one person, one one human being. Well, you are a guest now in Urban Dream, in a big event, and we have teams on the streets. We are serving the people. We are caring for the people. We are evangelizing on the streets. And wow, have... but, you, that's, but you answered the, your own question. That's what it taken. The excitement. The, 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 this is what young people need, something to get excited, something that they can testify, something that they can say it can happen. And then when they go over there, because their prayer, because the anticipation mm. and the inspiration, it's going to make it more easy for me. Yeah, yeah. Because that love is like an energy that's going to penetrate in every, everybody, including Nikki Cruz. Yeah. So, hey, this is not just the evangelist. We're all together in this. Yeah. We have many churches working together now, and we are really hoping to get more churches in the future. Do you think that we should continue with this vision? I, I do believe that you should. I, I do believe that you got, you, you, that I pray that God develop new evangelists in this country, mm. that they can take it yeah. to that level that, in, that, that Finland mm. needs. Yeah. I do believe that, that, that this country is ready. Mm. I, of all the countries from Norway, uh, Sweden, and Denmark, you got, you got a heavy chance because you people are more open for the Holy Spirit. And, and, mm. and there's a lot of people in this country that love Jesus Christ. The only thing is mm. that you got to be more aggressive in mm -hmm. share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. Oh, in 20 years, the Muslims take over. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Nikki Cruz, can you please uh, talk to the camera? There might be many viewers who would uh, like to give their life to Jesus. And maybe you could, you know, pray for the people who are watching this program. And thank you for coming. And, you know, I, I believe God would like to help many people who are watching. Sure. I just, I just want to say that in my life, I, I, I never thought uh, that I'm going to come into this position or this place that I am today. I am the first one who's going to tell you I was lost. I was Mr. Nobody. 
And I never thought that I'm going to have a chance in my life. The brutality of loneliness almost killed me. And I knew that my hand was so full of blood. And I knew that I hurt many innocent people and my gangs, and there was people who got killed. And I knew that when you are alone there, you have to deal with two words that are always going to hunt you. And that is guilt and shame. And that was the thing that hurt me the most because I was guilty of many things. I raised my hands and said, yes, I'm guilty. I was guilty. I was ashamed of who I was. I was ashamed of my mother that she was a witch. I was ashamed of my father that was a satanic priest. I don't want nothing to do with it. I prefer to be a bastard than to be called their son. And when you feel alienated, that is what loneliness is all about. That is when you are so vulnerable to commit the biggest mistakes of your life. And that's why there's a feel of many, many evil things, many things that can take you and destroy you. And there's all this desire from drugs, because right now there are all kinds of drugs. This is a drug culture society. And yet more is still to, to go to God, we are putting away from him. We sometimes, we laugh about it. We think that it's a joke. And sometimes that this is for pussycat, chicken, gutless, people that, that, that they don't have no values. But you run. Jesus Christ is for the toughest. You got to have heart. You got to have heart to do this. This is not for the chickens and the gutless and the pussycat. This is for people who stand for Christ and say, I am not ashamed. I know who I am. There's a part of me that, that it needs need to be changed. And I know in this moment that the Holy Spirit is giving you conviction in your heart that if, if Jesus changed Nikki Cruz, he can change me too. Bring it into your life. Bring it into your home. Let Jesus be the guest in your home. Do you know that's one of the greatest privilege to allow Jesus to sit down and have supper with you. And regardless if you don't see him, but you can feel him. And the day that you open up to Christ, that the day of salvation. And I tell you one thing, you got the energy to do it. You have the vulnerability to open your heart. If you be vulnerable to God, you're for, for 30 seconds, you have been vulnerable to drugs, you have been vulnerable to sex, you have been vulnerable to all kinds of things, witchcraft or, or, or searching or doing this, and, and alcohol. Can you be vulnerable just for 30 seconds to Jesus and let him come in? And I tell you, I don't want to say Cheyenne, Disneyland, it's going to happen fast, but that's the beginning of a journey when God can take over. And he can be the Lord of, Lord of your life. And I tell you of something that I learned. Dream never die, but the dreamer do. Love never die, but the lover do. Jesus Christ is alive. Be a winner. Don't be a loser. Remember that. Jesus loves you. Mm. Can we pray for the people? You want me to pray for the people? Are you sure? Thank you. Father, in this moment, I thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for send, sending Jesus to this earth. And thank you, Jesus, that you never lost your heart. And you die hard. And regardless there was no attractiveness and no beauty in you. And that torn you apart. You never give up. You took it. And you die hard. You never chicken out. You was there. Just like a piece of meat. And yet your lips open up to say that prayer. 
Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. I pray that we have a place for you, that we remember what you had done, that not only you died for our sin, but you resurrected. So you, you have a place for all of us. That is the greatest hope that we have. Thank you, Jesus, because I know that these ones that are listening, you can really come in and change their life. I ask you for a miracle of salvation. And I ask you for healing for those that emotionally, they are completely going into so many directions that you will heal them. I pray for the sick that you have the power right now to experience not only salvation, but the healings of the Holy Spirit and that body, mind and soul and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.